So today we're here to talk about the Datchel CBT tool. We'll be working through uh, a tutorial um, to explain how to use the software. So very briefly about me, I'm Phil Wade. I'm the uh, owner and managing director of Datchel. Um, I'm a geotechnical engineer, like uh, many of you, uh, and I've been uh, in this uh, sort of line of work for a around 20 years, a bit over 20 years. So I'm, I'm based in Singapore. So most of our client, um, attendees today are from Southeast Asia. So our uh, schedule for today, we'll, uh, the whole thing will take about one hour. This is fairly introductory. Uh, so you're gonna need, if once you really get serious and need to uh, get into the details, you should refer to our user guide, which is all online. That's the URL, I'll provide that later. So the agenda generally is I will give an overview of the software, what it can do. Uh, and I'll mention the license types and then we'll get into the tutorial, which will take the, the majority of the day. So a little bit about Datchel first. We, we are a uh, third party developer of Gint technology. So we uh, can uh, provide you with add-ins to Gint. We can sell you Gint licenses as well. Um, but my, I think what sets us apart is we are truly experts in the Gint software product and we are geotechnical engineers as well. So we really understand what you're trying to do with the product. Um, we have currently in excess of uh, 235 companies using our software around the world. Um, and uh, we have our current team is uh, well, primarily in Singapore, but we have some guys in uh, Spain and Australia as well working with us. So the big picture is the Datgel add-ins in green sort of fit around the Gint product range. So the CPT tool is the product we're here to talk about today. We have a number of other add-ins in the more geotechnical sort of functionality space. Some utility type tools, particularly the output tool is very useful with the CPT tool. Uh, the DGD tool is sort of one of our other major products. It is related to making borehole logs and managing lab results and so on. But all of these are add-ins to GINT. So in order to use the Datchel CPT tool or any of these other tools you see here, you're gonna to need to have a GINT license of some type. So in the case of the CPT tool, Pro and Pro Plus are the products that work best. Uh, you get the most functionality. Logs will work, but you can only make a log report then. Um, okay, now the databases. So GINT uses um, databases. And uh, so there's a library database which stores the reports and the, uh, the uh, project database, which has the, um, the project data in it. Okay. So you can store these databases on a server or on, or on your local C drive, which I'll be doing on my C drive today. And the program, these are the programs they're installed on the client computer, normally your you know, local laptop or something. So the CPT tool, what is it? Well, as we've said, it's an add-in to GINT and it provides, it, it incorporates a program which uh, imports data into the database and calculates results, writes those results to the database. And then it incorporates um, a library which has hundreds of reports predefined uh, and it, obviously the database uh, structure which we provide um, that works with the library. So you can use it to import hundreds of files at the same, in the same time, same process. You can calculate results using the same settings and parameters for all those hundreds of tests uh, and then produce um, reports, graphical reports and export the data to uh, other formats like AGS format or GEF format or CSV or whatever. 
Um, if you're using an SQL Server database, you can uh, you can store thousands of databases, thousands of points in one database, um, and it allows you to really produce what you need. Right? It's very flexible reporting tools, so you can customize the reports to meet exactly what your clients are asking you to create, and then reproduce that over and over and over again. So it can import a large number of file formats. In fact, in the last couple of months, we've developed two more. Um, 16 is probably a bit of an understatement anyway. Um, so it'll calculate derived parameters, correlations, saw behavior types. Uh, has, as I've said, hundreds of reports predefined, graphs, logs, fences. You can define the colors. So if you, in fact, we don't even use these colors anymore. So you can define what color you want to use for saw behavior type one, for example. Um, you can uh, analyze and calculate dissipation tests. Um, you can cal or present seismic cone data. It doesn't really do any analysis. It can do, but it can do full blow on liquefaction analysis uh, and pile capacity. It can do the mechanical cone, which is very uh, common in Indonesia and one of the more recent -ish, um, requirements is we, we all have developed this functionality to calculate a specification requirement, you know, for a reclamation, you may have some sort of complicated requirement with depth that you need to satisfy. Um, and recently we developed or added functionality for the export of GEF. Um, that was last year, but in general, we added the entire what was previously called the Datchel administrator tools into the CPT tool. And that brings a lot of, uh, you know, functionality that wasn't originally in this product that is quite useful for dealing with masses of data that you deal with in CPTs. Right. So we're going to move on now to the tutorial. Um, so you may like to take a screenshot of this because uh, I'm going to take it away in a minute. I'm going to then look again. But this, this is the what we're going to do today. We're going to talk about what's in the, the package. We're going to import some data. So we're sort of going to follow what's in the quick start guide or tutorial for the CPT tool. Um, but we'll be using a different file than what's suggested in that 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 original tutorial. Um, so we'll produce a log, well, two logs actually. Uh, some graphs. Uh, we will explain where everything is in the system. So we can sort of leave it, use it as a lasting record. Uh, we'll analyze and present a dissipation test and we'll produce a fence. So we won't be getting into the very details of like editing the formula tool or editing reports um, that will come. Uh, well, that's a bit beyond the one hour that, we'll, that we have today. Okay, so these are the files we'll be working with, but we'll, you know, of course, I'll show you that as, as we go. Let's close the PowerPoint, go back to Gint. Um, first, let's look at what, what's in the package. So it would be best if you have extracted the package, CPT tool trial package to your C drive like this. Um, but you can have it anywhere. Just that's where I've got it. It might be simpler for you to keep track of what what's going on by you know if you've got it in the same place. So in the in that folder we have some example PDFs and links to the webs to our docs online. Um, example data files which we will be using, well at least two of them anyway. Um, the GIMP files folder has the libraries and the projects and correspondence files. So that's sort of the GINT specific things. Um, the installation files is the installer. Uh, and so you should have already installed that. And if you haven't, you need to do that immediately. And the other prerequisite of course, is that you have installed GINT and you have at least activated a trial of GIMP Professional. That's uh, the product we're going to need for the tutorial at the minimum. Um, all right, so 
Let's go back to GIMP. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do is um, make a new project. So I, yes, I have an existing project open right now, but I'll be making a new project. So we go click on, maybe I should go back to this. Uh, this uh, same, this might be what you see, right? So when you open GIMP for the first time, actually when you open for the first time, you need to select, it'll ask you for a library, right? So when it asks you for a library, you need to browse to this library file here. And so that's what I have open up here. Now I will click on the open project and uh, no, not open project, I'm gonna make a new project. New project uh, and it remembers where I went before. So you need to select the data template you wanna use. So you go to C drive, extract the zip, in files and choose the um, SI GDT. And then we need to name our new project. So I'm going to name it number two. So now we have the blank project. All right, next, next we will be importing some data. So if you haven't previously activated the, uh, the trial license for the CPT tool, this is when you need to do it. So if you haven't activated the trial, you, you could click on licensing and it would then prompt you to activate the trial. You would have two radio buttons and you need to select the one that says trial license, which is the second radio button. It's a different form than what you see here. And then you just follow through the process. It's quite basically, you just click next a few times and it's done, right? You don't have to type anything particularly. Um, if you're using a full version like me, then you just, it'll just work. So now we will import data. So we're going to click on add-ins, Statue CPT tool, import tool. So to start with, we're going to just import some data and make something happen, right? Later, we will come back and explain where everything is uh, and so on. So once you've clicked on import data, you'll see the file type. You need to select probe drill text disk. Override of never is good. And then we need to, then we need to select the uh, data files to import. So let's go to C drive, extracted zip, example data files, and we need to pick these two files here. So one of them, the text file is the normal CPT data. The disk file is the dissipation test. And we'll be using those. All right, click open. Next, we need to select the correct correspondence file and then it will remember it from there on for this file type. So the correspondent files are C drive, extract the zip, kin files. And for probe drill, yeah, there are a couple uh, of ones. Um, so the format changed over the years. And um, so we're gonna pick this GCI 11 actually. I want the right one for this data file. And then once that's done, we click execute to import the data. So you could have selected hundreds of files actually, uh, probably I wouldn't recommend hundreds, but say 50 files uh, at, uh, in that browsing process. And it could be a combination of CPT files and dissipation test files. All right, the data has imported. Um, so we can review what, what's, uh, what's happened. So we have one general header and 108 data block 
which basically means that's the data records for the normal CPT data. So we've got one point, one general, 808 CPT data records, that's right. And then there are three dissipation tests, that's what this is telling me, and in total, 564 records. Um, got three, and we got 433 records. Well, that's interesting, something we might wanna try to understand, but we won't look into that right now. So we click OK. And now we can see that the, 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 the point ID imported, go to CPT. In fact, it might be, it's a bit easier to um, use the tree diagram. So I'll do that. You can see the, the CPT has imported. Um, and the dissipation tests are in the dissipation test table. There they are. Okay. Um, so at this point, we will uh, configure the, um, the pore pressure, uh, the, the, the cone area ratio, I should say, and the, um, the cone area ratio and the groundwater depth and a couple of other things about the cone. So we'll go to CPT cone information. And go to cone area ratio. So for this cone, this is I believe the right number. We also need to enter the, the cone diameter and the cone sleeve offset. Uh, all right, so this is necessary to calculate total cone resistance or correct the cone resistance. This is necessary to do the dissipation test analysis. And this is necessary to smooth any uh, rod changes out um, from the data for the FS. Uh, all right, which is not, it's not compulsory. It's an option. All right, now when I do this, it's going to prompt me to calculate. However, I am going to cancel this because we don't need it. We need to, we need to set the groundwater depth. So cancel that first calculation and go back here. And I'm going to enter 1.1 for the groundwater depth. And now I will calculate. take about a minute to do so. All right, it's finished. Um, so all the data now has been written to the database. Uh, we can scroll over here and see the um, various options. Soil behavior types and derived parameters are here. Then um, correlation data. Uh, for normal parameters are here. Uh, there is an environmental data table, but this doesn't have anything that sort of falls under that. Uh, liquefaction analysis. So it was calculated as well with some default values, which of course are not going to be right for your situation. Um, and foundation type things. So our capacity and shallow foundation settlement, again, with some default parameters, which would be need to be edited for your situation. Um, I'll just mention project parameters briefly. This is the default settings for the whole project for unit weights and soil behavior types. Um, so they were just used. We'll come back and talk about this in more detail later. Um, all right, let's go to strata main, for example. And now I'm going to summarize the soil behavior type descriptions into this table. So add ins, that's your CPT tool, transfer description and consistency for current point ID. So it just consolidated the things that are the same together. There's some rules around that and it summarized the consistency density as well. 
Uh, it can do soil strength using Eurocode if that's what you want. Just at the moment, this is set for Australian standard. Uh, okay, so now we can go to output. And logs. And I'll pick the, this log here. Now we only have the one point ID, so I didn't really actually have to select it, but I just did it to show the point. All right, so um, gonna make a PDF. So I think it's better than previewing. And I'll set, I've already set this to 600 DPI. You'd have to set that yourself, but because it's not default. And click uh, export. All right, done. So I'll just uh, zoom in a bit. So this is what we call a fixed log, basically meaning you don't have any options when you click, you know, execute at output time. Um, so, but you, you can design more fixed logs for yourself using the columns that we've created. All right, so obviously we have the cone resistance, a series of other things, so two cell behavior types, um, correlations for relative density. So in this case, we have three different correlations presented for relative density. Uh, you'll see later that you can decide to turn particular ones off if you wish, um, or you can write your own. This is three pages long. So it's, when is it? Okay, it's about 20 meters deep. My recollection was incorrect earlier. Okay, now we'll do a dynamic log where you can decide what you want to see. Change the PDF name. All right, so you can pick, so let me to do that. Um, you can pick it from a list and click F2 to drop the list. Um, I said to draw myself. I'm a bit surprised I couldn't copy it in, but uh, that's, that's a bit. There's many soil behavior type indexes. So I'll pick this one. All right, you can pick whatever you like. In reality, uh, I'll try just time off for one more in. Um, we won't get to every detail here. Just enter some columns, click OK. And then you will get that data presented in the PDF. So at for your particular project where you have, you're interested in particular things for this, for this particular CPT or series of CPTs you want to print out, you can define what you want at the time of output without having to go and design a new report, you know, which would, could take you hours. Uh, you know, it's, you can just do it in a, like obviously, you know, within a few seconds. All right, while we're on the case of, um, uh, example PDFs, right? Or PDFs. This this uh, PDF here has an example of everything that the tool can produce, from vibratory compaction weighted averages to um, comparison CPTs. We've got uh, data before and after compaction, mechanical CPTs. So the Sondia. Um, CPTs with uh, is that the one I wanted moving averages, right? Different options for moving averages. 
Uh, you'll see later we can make fence diagrams and graphs. And we see every soil behavior type has a graph, all the, all the graphs that are, you know, apply to it. Uh, every parameter has graphs available. Okay, just finished and will pop up. Okay, here's the data that I just selected. All right, now, now we're gonna produce uh, a couple of graph reports. First one will be the um, Robinson 1990. So yes, I copy pasted that in, but you can, the easiest way to do this is to actually type CPT R and um, probably CPT Rob. And then it's the first one. It's simply, that's how I selected it. Um, and we'll name a new file, PDF. Okay, so we got the the legend. So the legend like this can also be on the log report. Um, didn't select it for that last one, but the first one we did. So we have all the equivalent graphs and, you know, that are needed to define all of the soil behavior types. Okay, and the other one I wanna do is CPT SU depth. So I don't have to select the point ID because we've only got the one point ID in this database, but normally you would have to. Um, now we don't have any design lines in this database, but you can select it to uh, show on the graph as well. All right, so back here, just, um, see that we have different graphs and we have dissipation test as well. So in the example we're going to do later, um, we won't be plotting the double graph one, but I think it's quite a good example of what most people want to show just in this data set we're about to do. It doesn't have the QC. So do the main graph and the secondary graph and the results are down the bottom. That's uh, pretty cool. Then we have a lot of summary type graphs as well. Like this could show many on the page. Yay is our summary of, so the, this graph is designed to show many point IDs on the same page. You wouldn't be able to differentiate the difference between the different point IDs. Um, and the dots represent the different test methods. Uh, that's the best we could do for this uh, type of data, for this graph. And the NKT, question, common question, um, it's in the range of 16 to 17, depending on some factors you'll see later, how that works, I'll explain it again. All right, go back to input now. And now I'm gonna give the uh, full where is everything uh, sort of uh, spiel. So, so starting right at the beginning, right? So when we first made the project, we were looking at the project table. So this was where you would enter the, um, the title of your project, the project ID. Sometimes that would be imported from the, uh, from the, uh, from the data file. Now the point table is where you list all of the locations. Um, even if you have many, you can do many CPTs in one borehole, uh, they would still be, have the one point ID. That's the concept of it. So you can see here the date processed um, and the username, that's part of the import process. 
Then this strata main table is the same place you might enter your borehole material descriptions if you were sharing this database for borehole data. We already looked at that really. Um, so CPT data is the main tables which store the imported information. So the top half of the screen is the test, right? The stroke. Um, and you could have many strokes in a given hole. The test number normally is a random number. So you may like to come in here and renumber these um, when you've imported them. Or you could edit the correspondence file to do something different. Groundwater depth, um, we've entered that. That's for obviously for onshore work. And for offshore work, you can put in the water depth. But for offshore work, it, that's not truly necessary. So really because, because you should be zeroing at the seabed normally. So then the, the overburden water pressure doesn't really get taken into account. It doesn't matter because the data is already recorded that way. We have some zero data here if it's, if it's available. That's mother metadata. So the colors of the fields, which I should have mentioned earlier, um, the yellow is required. Green is calculated potentially. Um, now the penetrate, we, we can do the correction for, um, uh, um, um, inclination if there is the available inclination, uh, for here, we, didn't do it, I'm not quite sure, because we only have one question that hasn't been applied. Um, obviously, then we have this brown is the is the, um, the raw data. Brownie green means it could be calculated or it could be uh, raw data. Uh, orange is metadata and purple is um, related purely to AGS format, which in this case, it's, we don't need to populate that field. <coughs> um, all right. So correlation data, obviously we looked here before, it's where the correlations are. Environmental data is where things like uh, soil, Temperature, it's a very com more common one, Contact conductivity or uh, magnetic flux, again, is a common enough one. The uh, lower bound, best estimate, upper bound, uh, this is yeah, it's calculated at the same time. So it is like um, three different values of NKT for the under end shear strength. Um, well, I'll show you later where that's defined. We'll get there. Cone information. This is where we store the parameters for each cone. So you might have five cones in here, something like that listed here in a bigger project with their parameters. Um, so we don't have to repeat it on every, every test. Okay. Dissipation tests. We will come back here and analyze one a little later. We have uh, some other tables. Okay, this one, the ball petrometer table, it, it can store some information we've imported, but it isn't doing really much. The point correlation summary, that's oh, probably better, I'll just show you. It, it can be populated using this command here. So it, um, does a stepped averaging of the information on the lower bound, best estimate, upper bound table. Uh, so it groups like information together. So you end up getting a fairly you know, stepped presentation on the, on the, on a, on a graph. Um, so it was originally designed to help people do pile design. Uh, stroke correlation summary is related to um, AGS format only and 
uh, actually rarely people use this. Um, I don't think we, yeah, I'm pretty sure we don't even calculate it. Uh, you have to, you'd have to mentor it yourself. Measured data, um, not getting used at the moment, but the thought was it would, would satisfy the ISO standard for CPTs where we you know, store everything from deck to deck. Thermal, conduct thermal, thermal conductivity. This is a, an important test for um, offshore wind farms. And so there is a, uh, some, you can import this data file uh, from the um, datum Neptune format and stores it here and allows you to export it to uh, AGS format. Um, we're not doing any special calculations with it. Okay, the specification, this is where the uh, results of the specification calculation are stored. If it passes or fails the requirements, basically. Um, no examples in this database. And the seismic uh, is just a place to store results at the moment um, to satisfy the Orsted AGS uh, plus, AGS4 plus format. Um, we haven't tried to do any calculations. Okay, liquefaction data. This is the calculations of every part of liquefaction correlations. We'll get to that in a moment. We'll look at the, the formulas briefly in a moment. Um, so if you look, you click on a column and you look down the bottom in the blue area, you can see the, um, the, the a representation of the formula. This is not the actual formula used it's just a caption, uh, a note to the user to tell you what it is. So these parameter tables store the settings that are used for the liquefaction analysis. Again, you look down the bottom, it has a maybe an expanded explanation of what, what's what. So you can set, you'll see this a lot in a moment. You can set settings at a project level or at, so overall, and a point level. Uh, foundation, right? So we've got, does the, the um, uh, pile capacity to the LCPC method, yes, LCPC. Uh, and it's um, some Schmertman is used for the sort of coarse grained settlement. Um, and again, the parameters, the project level, and overriding for each point if you want to, are right here. So if there's a value for the point, it uses it. If you can't find a value, if it's empty, you need to look, for the, look to the project. Right, now we're getting to the, okay, we went over a few things there that are not used that often, um, but this table is used a lot. So, you can set a ground, you can set the groundwater depth in a lot of places actually. We, we set it in a very simple location in one spot just now for a given stroke. And that's very convenient and common actually. Um, but sometimes depending on your project, you may not have a groundwater depth for every test or you just wanna make a simple assumption for everything on your project. Um, so you can put in a, a, an assumed depth for everything or an assumed elevation. So if you have an assumed elevation, you have to enter an elevation on the point table, of course. We have the unit weights above the water table and below the water table. Um, density of water. So in some regions, the uh, seawater density does vary, vary more significantly from one. So you can enter what you need to here. Um, have options about um, if you're going to calculate QT and FS based on QC rather than QT. So you want to make some assumptions based on a friction cone, uh, how the friction ratio is calculated. Uh, in um, some standards, you need to use the average over the Qs, over the sleeve. 
Um, okay, this is a very important one here. I'll skip over a few of it. Say you, you've noticed when we were working with the data, it would automatically start to calculate once you cause GINT to save, you know, change tables, click save. Now that that's okay if you're just processing one test, but um, if you want to like process 20 tests or 50 tests, um, that can be a bit annoying. So you can suppress the automatic calculation by checking this box. And then when you come to, um, uh, when you come to um, want to calculate all the data, you would go to add-ins, CPT tool, batch calculation. And then that will, doesn't need to calculate right now, but if it did, it would be listed here if it needed to calculate. And then you would push it to the right and click OK. Uh, now, this is the, the overriding place to set the soil behavior types. Um, so here's a, a list of what's available. This extrapolated means that we extrapolated the graph out another order of magnitude following the same line trajectories to capture more. You can choose to use that or not. Uh, without going to all the details, this stuff here is about summarizing the data, the rules around, you know, when do you make a new layer on the sorbet, on the, on the strata main table or the consistency density table when you do the summarize. So you can play with those to uh, get what you need. Correlation parameters. Uh, this is where you set things like constants for you want to vary the constants you know for a particular calculation or formula i think most commonly uh two, two very common ones is you you need to set different constants here for different types of soil for this baldy um approach uh let's click on that and you may want to put in a factor for the if it's a calcareous soil Another very common issue is with NKT. So the way we set this up is if you have the opportunity, if you want to, um, uh, to have a different NKT value depending on the QC. So if the QC in this case is, is less than 0.5 MPA, then the NKT will be 16. If it's greater than or equal to 0.5, it will be 17. So, all the normal correlations, which are on the CPT data correlation, mostly correlation data table, are defined. Their constants are defined here. Also, the lower bound, best estimate, upper bound are here. So remember, we mentioned that before. The lower bound, best estimate, upper bound uses only uh, the, um, the the classic NKT approach for undrained shear strength, and these are the three values which um, it will utilize but you can, of course, change them. So they, they, these are defaults. They are set as defaults. Um, all right, so these are the project level. Then you can set many or of the same things at the point level if you want to override the project level. Of course, it looks at the point level first. And then, in fact, also you can set some things at depth. You can set the unit weights and the pore pressures and the NKTs and some other things at depth for a given test. Um, all right, then there's some options uh, like, uh, do you want to show a light? Do you want to do this, do that? Um, what units you use? So the, the cyan colored field is for output options. Now, final, oh, not finally, but getting there. Um, a very common question, or almost everyone asks this question, is how do I set the scale for a graph? You know, I have, maybe you have a very soft soils and you only want to have 10 MPA as your maximum for cone resistance. Uh, this is where you type it, right here. Um, say 
you wish to, okay, and that would be for every graph that you print, will be 10. Um, say you don't like this particular correlation. I don't even know what, which one it is precisely, but you can turn it off or you can stop it showing on the report by um, making it false here. If you don't like that particular correlation. So you can somewhat minimize what you're presenting to your customers without deleting everything from the database or deleting the formulas. You just don't show the results to, to, for certain things. Um, you can override things like the line color and the line thickness and some other, well, all the parameters at a project level. Say you have a particular customer who goes, no, that line must be blue for, you know, on my graphs. Then you just come here and do it here. I'll show you later there is a place in the library to uh, configure that sort of thing as a default for your company. Um, all right, you can set that sort of thing for each point as well, um, but you'd have to pick it from the list here. I think it's quite rare that you probably do that. You can set soil behavior types for a particular project. You can, you can define the polygons and so on and put it in here. Uh, and so it's like a project, well, it is a project specific soil behavior type which may be like uh, you've changed the standard one a bit to satisfy particular um, like um, local conditions. Um, okay, all this CPT box stuff is about um, summarizing data to satisfy, that satisfies some type of specification requirement and then exporting it to a um, GIS type file. Um, so we won't be actually doing that now exercise. Okay. Now just to finalize where things are, I'm going to go to data design and cause you have a, your library is locked. You won't be able to do this. The, but the final sorts of calculation configurations are in data design library data. So this is where we store the soil behavior types and even the formulas for the formula tool are here as well couple of questions. Um, can we adjust the unit weight based on the lab result? Uh, yes. Well, uh, manually. Yes. I'll show you. Show you how one, that one before we go to data design. So you would need to put in the, um, the unit weight profile like from zero to one it's going to be 15 from one to two it might be 12 you know you need to get in there and do that it's not going to somehow um yeah that's that's the only way uh and uh next question um in the webinar tutorial, this program uses correlation to a B-type rock with 1990-86. Is there any update for 2010? Uh, we have not written 2010 because there's a lot of complication involved in that, but it is on our list. Next, we'll do the, um, uh, we'll do the dissipation test analysis. Yes, we had another question um, from City Neural. Uh, how about the CPT offshore data with stroke, like three meter strokes? Well, yes, it can do that. It's um, that's often um, that's defined in the user guide. We're not going to do that in today's um, today's tutorial. But basically, the correlation. Yeah, you can import whatever twenty files of Gorilla files in. You just got to select the correct correspondence file, which picks up the settings of the, the stroke, like the start depth of each stroke and recalculates the depth. So you end up having 20 strokes for a given um, point ID listed in the database. All right, let's do our, our dissipation test now. Analyze this one here. Um, so it's, the data is at U2. 
uh, I am going to write some notes from before. Um, yeah, we're going to use IR of 150. We need to enter the degree of dissipation of 50. Uh, I think I've got to set the UI. So I need to get into this number in. There we go. Uh, if I put in a ratio of CH to CV. Yeah, so. So the UI is normally the first record of the, the dissipation test. Okay, now once you've done that, we can go to output and um, graphs. The bottom here, one, two, this one. And let's preview the 14 meter one. Now, the final thing I want to show you today, um, actually, there's not, just a couple more things. I forgot something. Um, all right, in the add-in menu, right? I didn't, we didn't go through a couple of important things here. So the formulas, the formula tool is where the correlation formulas are stored. And you can configure more for yourself. So all of those uh, correlations for under and shear strength and whatever, they are in here. Uh, I'm not saying all the formulas are simple. There's a lot of sort of options and if this and if that's going on in that example there. Um, might be better to look at this one, it's a bit simpler. But one thing to keep note is when you write these formulas, you need to avoid divide by zeros and stolen like, you know, so you've got to sometimes errors, basically mathematical errors is best to avoid them because otherwise it makes it really slow. So um, you need to sort of allow for those um, or, or avoid those by putting in if statements like this. Um, and if you want to make a new formula, it might be useful to name it with your company name so that you can keep track of which ones are yours and which ones are the standard ones. All right, so we won't get to too much detail on that. Um, and another common question we get is about like, oh, I've imported data, but it needs, it's, it needs some corrections. It's got um, errors in it or the calibration wasn't right, or the, we need to offset it or something. So the data correction tool is a, has some similarities to the formula tool. But basically this tool can fix data, right? Uh, you can select which, you can select which stroke you wanna, wanna work with. Um, you can select which, um, which fix you wanna do. Like I've got some examples here of offsetting depths or adding 200 to the pore pressure. So now again, we're not gonna go into details of how it all works right now, but this tool can fix the results. Just be careful because you really will edit the data. Um, okay, now finally, the last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change projects to this, um, the, exam the full example CPT tool project where we have quite a few example point IDs. And I'm gonna to go to output, fences, pick, say this A3 fence, P3, 
a couple of so these uh, I'd pick these three CPTs. I don't want to do too many. A name a PDF. So we're basically going to just produce a fence diagram here. Um, view after export. Now when we click export, the user report variables will pop up, and we can select what we want to see. QT. FS, maybe you want to make the width of the, the stick 10 centimeters. Okay, I'll make it eight, 10. Um, you can have up to six uh, correlations and we can decide how what we want to see behind the stick, right? So I'll do LC actually. So L meaning the legend graphic and C means soil behavior type. Um, I think that's enough for this example. Click OK, then generate. There we go. So I made it super wide. Um, So the color is the soil behavior type, and then the, the, the graphics are the you know sand or clay or silt or whatever graphics. All right, let's go back to import, and I'll change back to my project add-ins import tool. So importing gorilla data, AP Vandenberg gorilla. Um, this is the, the one that's got the Okay, so we selected the data files. We selected the correspondence file, which is designed for this reference level data. So inside these gorilla files, there's a particular line which defines the start depth. And then we have the, the cone sleeve offset. See the probe drill data, um, it uh, already had the offset applied, but gorilla data doesn't. So we need to enter that. So click execute. Okay, we got um many sources, but all that adds up to this. One point seven CPT general. Hmm. So here are the records. So after that, you um, process it in the same way as we already looked at today. It sort of just treats it like one, one point. Um, however, okay, one other thing you probably need to do is you need to delete the mess, you know, the, the bad data, right? So at the top here, you know, it's obviously not zero, right? It's, you need to, ideally, I think you should go in here and delete the rows which are affected by the previous stroke or the drilling method, the drill out. Um, there are ways where you can do that using um, SQL statements. The SQL tool, you could write like things to do it really automatically. Like I did process uh, some data for somebody last year 
uh, where they had hundreds of tests and we needed to clean up the data. And I, so, I, so the simplest approach was to like, strip off the first 0.3 of a meter or from every stroke or something like that. And perhaps we, we might have moved the data up as well. I'm trying to remember now the exact details. But using the SQL tool and the data correction tool, you can clean up the data. So we have, well, we did everything. Yes, in my list there. Uh, these were the files and stuff that we used, all the reports and files. So your, um, your next step is to continue your trial. Um, we can extend the trial if needed. I think if you really get into using the CPT tool, you'll quickly use up the, the counts of the use in the trial. So it's fine, we can extend it at least once for you. Um, the docs have all the, the details. Um, initially, you could refer to the quick start guide, but what we've done today was all of the quick start guide and more. If you have questions, you can email support at datgel.com. If you're interested in purchasing, you can email sales at datgel.com. Um, so for the rest of the year, we are going to run some more webinars, like real, this is more a training course, but a normal webinar for the CPT tool, DGT tool, and security tool enterprise. And we intend to run a training course as well in the Asia Pacific time zone. So if you want to contact us, um, there are a few ways. Um, that's some phone numbers. We have a new WhatsApp, company WhatsApp. You can use that now. Or we could always use our pure chat, which is on our website. Thanks for everyone's attention today um, and have a, have a great day.